Hello, my name is um, Susan Schneibel. I'm a member of the library's Board of Trustees and I'm here today to welcome you all to the 100th birthday celebration of this wonderful library. Before we begin, let me thank Dr. Eric Simpson of Maryville College and his musicians for providing the musical prelude to the program. Thank you so much for making this day even more special for us. Thanks. And today we have something else that's really, whoa, I don't know about that. <laughs> today we have something else that's even very special. We've commissioned portraits to be painted by Amy Campbell of the library directors for the past 100 years. I haven't seen it yet. I don't know if any of us have seen it. You probably are familiar with Amy's work. It's hanging as well in the Maryville Municipal Building. So Casey, let's, let's take a first sneak preview of this painting. Oh wow, great. Okay, so um, after the program, let me invite you to come up and take a look at this wonderful piece of art. This was commissioned just for today, okay? I've, <clears throat> I've been asked to say a few words about the history of the library and to highlight the key people in this portrait and their contributions to the life of the library over, over the past 100 years. The initial vision for a public library began with a group of visionary women at the Chilhawi Club. And we're going to hear more from them about their vision and contribution later in the program. So let's go back now to the year 1919. And let me tell you a bit about Miss Annabelle Smith, who became Maryville called Maryville's first library director. It was she who established the first children's story time a program that is alive and flourishing today. Indeed, if any of you have been here when Chelsea Tarwater or Clay Crease are conducting story time sessions, you know just how vibrant that program is still today. It's wonderful to watch. Annabelle Smith also created a book shower to provide books for the library and its patrons. And she was the one who oversaw the library's move from to the A.K. Hopper Memorial Library Building. A gifted artist, she served as the head of the Maryville College Art Department. As we celebrate this 100th birthday, we also celebrate her and her artwork, which you will see reproduced on posters, note cards, and pins throughout the library. You see them on your tables. Next, let's turn to Miss Johnny Coulter. She first served as a librarian under Annabelle Smith and later became the di library director from 1939 to 1944. In total, she served the library faithfully for 25 years. And it was under her leadership that the collection of books doubled from 5,000 to 10,000 volumes, not an insignificant feat in those days. The next major development was the incorporation of the library into the Fort Loudoun Regional Library System. And that happened during Mrs. Kate Nance's tenure as library director from 1944 to 1972. It was this incorporation that opened the door for the bookmobile services, which brought information and educational resources to the far reaches of the county, thereby helping the library touch more lives. Our next director was Mr. Clarence Payne. He began as a library construction consultant. I have to admit, I'm not sure what that means, a library construction consultant. Don't know. We have to do more research on that one. But before becoming the library director, he, d he became the library director when Miss Nance died, oh, I think it was in 1972. He was the director for three years. He also served as the editor of the Review Index. It was Mrs. Evelyn McDaniel who led three major movements during her time as library director from 1975 to 1989. And indeed, we still see the effects of her efforts today. 
Mrs. McDaniel saw the library move to the McGee Street location. Most importantly, however, she engineered a new charter so that the entire county could use the library, not just the city of Maryville. And also, importantly, she helped organize the Friends of the Library, a group that is invaluable to this library and its programming outreach today. You're probably familiar with the poster they have out there saying, um, we're the friends of the library and we're the reason why this library is way cool. And they're right about that. They're certainly right about that. Mrs. Pagels served as library director from 1990 to 2013 and as president of the Tennessee Library Association from 2003 to 2004. Mrs. Pagel saw the library move from the McGee Street location to the current building on Cusick Street. It was she who helped the li library become a technology hub as computers, databases, and the internet became mainstays of library service. Our current library director, Casey Williams, came on board in 2013. Her vision along with funding from the Library Foundation, led to the establishment of the Learning Lab, a continuing education center dedicated to helping improve the job skills of our local workforce. She also helped spur the Recovery Court program, which received national recognition in the Lib American Libraries magazine. During her short tenure here, she has overseen the total revamping of our technology infrastructure bringing it in line with the latest advances. She has expanded and improved our programming dramatically. Again, something that could not have been done without the help of the friends. And she is actively building bridges to the community to better deliver our services. In short, in many ways, the library has become a community center. So how, do, how does one sum up 100 years of history? Let me try by just focusing on the essentials. A lot has changed over the past hundred years, but in essence, the mission of the library has remained the same, namely to serve the needs of our community. True, those needs have changed in how we bring education, information, cultural opportunities to our patients, our patrons have changed so the tools may be different, but the goals remain the same. And let's remember that the mission of the library has succeeded over time because of the dedication of the librarians and staff to that mission. Without that dedication and expertise, this building would be a beautiful but empty shell. It wouldn't be the vibrant community center it is today. So let's give a round of applause to, to librarians, past and present, who have kept this mission alive. Now let me ask KC to come up. She's gonna do some other introductions. Okay, can y'all hear me all right? I have the, the best part of the program. I have the thank you and recognition part. Um, in my role as library director, I'm often called on to ponder, um, what is it that makes a library? Is it the books? Is it the programming? Is it the physical space? Is it the librarians? Is it the staff? Hmm. While all of these resources are important to have in a library, they are not what makes a library. Libraries are first and foremost about people. The heart and soul of a public library can be found in the people of the community, and the people of Blount County love this library. Community support for the library is shown daily through the efforts of these special groups. Mm -hmm. As I recognize each group, I would ask members to stand. So if you are actively 
a member of the Board of Trustees or you have ever served on the Board of Trustees for the library, please stand. These volunteers are appointed by the funding bodies and are responsible for oversight of all library policy and operations. They graciously give of their time and energy to ensure that the library provides resources and services to the community. Thank you, Board of Trustee members. If you have ever been a member or are currently a member of the Friends of the Blount County Library, please stand. This group of volunteers serves as community advocates for the library and volunteers their time to raise the funds needed to provide all the library program initiatives, not just some. The friends provide the funding for all of our programs. Their efforts allow library staff to go above and beyond. Without them, we would not be what we are today. Thank you, friends. If you currently are or have ever served as a member of the Blount County Public Library Foundation, please stand. <laughs> These volunteers raise the funds needed for capital improvements. This beautiful building is a physical example of their efforts, and we are very appreciative. Thank you. And finally, but most importantly, our three funding bodies. If you are a member of or have ever served on one of these bodies or as an elected official or are, or are a county or city employee, I'd like you to stand. The Blunt County Commission, the City of Maryville Alderman, and the City of Alcoa Commission, including the mayors and their administrators who work closely with the library staff to ensure that the library has the annual operating budget needed to maintain a consistent level of library services, provide the foundation for what we can do to support you as part of our community. Without them, the library would not exist. So we cannot thank them enough. And I would be remiss if I did not take a moment to thank the members of the Chilhowee Club who were instrumental in the creation of our library and who continue to support library initiatives. If you're a member of the Chilhowee Club, please stand. And last but not least, the Tennessee Secretary of State, Trey Hargett, the Tennessee State Library and Archives, the Ocoee River Regional Library System, and our elected state officials who work to support libraries at the state level, making possible many of our library services, including Reads and Tell. So if you are a part of the state library system, would you please stand? <laughs> And finally, I would like to recognize and thank the 100th Birthday Planning Committee, Cynthia Spittler, Kathleen Christie, Kathy Thompson, as well as the members of the staff. Please stand if you're a member of the staff. Um, the library facilities team and the Friends volunteers who volunteered their time and effort on this excellent birthday celebration. Thank you so much. Next up on our program is Tom Taylor. Tom is a longtime library supporter and the mayor of the city of Sevierville. I mean, the city of Maryville. Sorry, <laughs> Freudian slip. Um, <laughs> mayor Taylor has been a staunch library supporter and was a driving force in the planning, fundraising, development, and building of this library. His efforts as a library champion continue on through his role as mayor 
His efforts on behalf of the library have ensured that the library continues to grow and evolve to meet our community expectations. Please join me in wel welcoming Mayor Tom Taylor. I think that's the worst I've been insulted today. Anyway, <laughs> in her defense, she was the library director in Sevierville before she came here. I, I, I can see how that happened. Well, well, welcome to what is still the largest and most heavily used non-metro library in the state of Tennessee. <laughs> uh, I would almost challenge any other library in the state besides in the big metros to pull a crowd like this for an anniversary party and and I think this is wonderful. When we were building the library we gathered some data that we used as talking points to uh, go out and beg people for money and uh, one of the data points was that the library was circulating more books than McDonald's was selling hamburgers each day in the, sta in the city of Maryville. And the other one was that we had more kids enrolled in the summer reading program than were in all the little leagues in the city of Maryville, Alcoa, Eagleton, all over. And, and those were the kind of numbers that people could relate to and see the importance of having a strong library. And uh, so that, I think that speaks well that we have continued to, to keep that idea and dream alive. Well. <clears throat> You know, uh, nothing personal, Bob, but, but you guys down in the General Assembly tend to really crank out the words. <clears throat> and I'm going to read, I'm going to read a, a joint proclamation, um, and it's actually House Joint Resolution number 409 that was sponsored by our local legislative body, which was, was Representative Ramsey, Representative Moon, and Senator Swan. And I'm actually not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to hit a lot of the highlights because it's, it goes over a lot of the history of the library too. But there are some very important points in this resolution that we need to talk about. Um, and this is a resolution to honor and congratulate the Blount County Public Library upon the occasion of its 100th anniversary. Whereas it is the privilege of the General Assembly to recognize these venerable institutions that are donated to serving their communities and whereas one such, one such institution is the Blount County Public Library, which is celebrating its 100th anniversary. And it talks about uh, the founders being the Chilhowee Club, the Tuesday Club, the Women's Christian Temperance Union, and all of these organizations had a dream for the library in the city of Maryville. <clears throat> and some of the earliest meetings, as you can tell from reading the minutes, took place in the women's lounge or restroom of the Bank of Mirable downtown. Now I think it was not in the stalls, it was, it was out in more of a lounge part, but, but uh, that's where a lot of it was, was formed. And you notice that, that the women of this community were the ones that actually founded this library. Uh, whereas in the years that followed, citizens did uphold the library as a living, growing force in the community, overcoming financial obstacles, a shortage of books, lack of heating and cooling, and more. The library board members during the Depression brought bags of coal to the meeting so that they could keep that building warm. Uh, whereas in 1981, the library continued to be a living, growing force, offering more services in Blount County by moving to a new and larger building on McGee Street. And whereas the Blount County Public Library has uh, continuously responded by frequently using its resources, including print and non-print, CD-ROM, computers, and internet. And whereas the current Blount County Public Library on Cusick Street opened in 2002, and now with a collection, collection size of more than 200,000 items, serves a diverse population of 130,000 citizens, reaching over 1,000 people every day. Whereas after 100 years of service, the Blount County Public Library continues to uphold the democratic values of freedom and information to all. And that is very important. The library is not political. They, they uh, serve all the community. Uh, whereas the statement by A. Bell Smith, the first librarian, still holds true. The library can reach your home in books. It can educate, amuse, cheer, and recreate with books. And whereas while the library offers more than books today, it can still reach your home by educating, amusing, cheering, and recreating. 
whereas in the next hundred years, the Blount County Library will continue to be a living, growing force in the community by celebrating history, creating connections, and, inspi and inspiring imagination. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the House of Representatives of the 111th General Assembly in the state of Tennessee, the Senate concurring, that we honor and congratulate the librarians, staff, volunteers, and patrons of the Blount County Public Library on the occasion of the library's 100th anniversary and extend our best wishes for every continued success. This, this uh, joint resolution is signed by the Speaker of the House, the Speaker of the Senate, the Governor, Representative Bob Ramsey, Senator Art Swan, and Representative Jerome Moon. Dr. Ramsey, thank you so much for helping get this, this uh, joint resolution. And uh, it is well deserved, and I think every word of it is true, even though I didn't read every word. So, <laughs> we're presenting this. Where'd Casey go? Casey. Oh, do you want this? Okay, sure. Uh, and and now I'm going to ask uh, Representative Ramsey to come up to the podium and congratulations. Thank you, Mayor, and, and thank all of you for, for your attendance here and, and your genuine support of this institution, uh, agency, uh, for so many years. I bring greetings from the General Assembly of the State of Tennessee, our, our Governor Bill Lee, um, here on behalf of uh, Representative Moon and Senator Swan. And uh, it's our great honor to be a, uh, just a small part of this celebration and, and be able to, uh, to show our uh, respect and, and give honor to this uh, uh, great institution. We appreciate all of you that worked so hard here. I, I had a bill over this last year that uh, dealt with the ability of our friends of the library to uh, make tax-free funds uh, on behalf of the library. And I was uh, educated to the point that that uh, we have a thousand members of our friends of the library, which is just astronomical. Uh, the uh, revenues that, that the friends of the library bring in uh, are very, very uh, comparable to uh, uh, Hamilton County, to Shelby County, and, uh, and uh, for the size of our county, we do a marvelous job. So I wanna say thank you to all of you. I wanna say particularly thank you to the staff, uh, all of those that support the Friends of the Library, and uh, I'll be a little less lengthy than my resolution. So, uh, <laughs> so please accept our thanks and our gratitude. Uh, we look forward to helping you in the future, and uh, f for that, I think uh, I say thank you to all of you. And so now we'll talk about, uh, about a real uh, classy politician. I'm gonna introduce the, the video that we have from Senator Lamar Alexander, who I'm sure wishes that he was here. Uh, he is, is a great supporter of our community and, uh, and one of our uh, most prominent names, and, and uh, uh, we appreciate him so much. Uh, this is a video that he has sent with his uh, uh, appreciation and uh, with his uh, kind words about this wonderful institution. So with that, we'll watch the video. Hello, I'm Lamar Alexander and I have a great many memories about visiting the Blunt County Library. It was always very important to the Alexander family. For example, when I was running for President of the United States, the New York Times had this to say about where I'd come from. They said, Mr. Alexander, grew up in a lower middle class family in a small town in the mountains of Tennessee. Well, that was all right with me, but it was not I discovered when I called home the next weekend, okay with my mother. She was literally reading Thessalonians to gather strength for how to deal with this slur on the family. And she said to me, we never thought of ourselves that way. You had a library card from the day you were three and a music lesson from the day you were four. You had everything you needed that was important. You know, Maryville was certainly a busy place 100 years ago. In 1919, World War I was ending. D. 
D.W. Prophet was tossing Thanksgiving turkeys off the roof of his store on Broadway to attract customers. The city of Alcoa was founded. Alcoa's West Plant was beginning to be built. Maryville College was celebrating its 100th birthday. The first 13 students graduated from Maryville High School. Maryville Kiwanis was established and the Blunt County Public Library was founded. For 100 years, the Blunt County Library has helped our children read, learn important leadership skills, and attend college. So thanks to all you do to make Maryville the best place to, to live in the world, and I congratulate you on 100 years of leadership and service to Blunt County. I was going to wait on KC to introduce me, but I didn't know where she would say I was from, so... I thought I better run up here and grab this mic before she she put me somewhere else. Uh, I, I just want to say, uh, sitting there uh, just now, and when uh, uh, they were asking if you were a part of different organizations or different entities that uh, that are responsible for what's made this library what it is, other than the Chihaui Club, which I'm not sure he's not a member of, and just somewhere along the way, I want to say. Mayor Taylor uh, stood up every time. And uh, I've known Mayor Taylor for a long time, and I promise you there's no one has any more passion and love for this library than Mayor Taylor. And I think it's just an honor to be able to serve with him and to see his passion and how much he loves this library. And I just want to thank you, Tom, for that. Whenever you, whenever I'm getting ready to read a proclamation, I always look at to see how many whereases it has in it. And if it has a lot of whereases, that means that, that uh, whoever, whatever person or entity that uh, the proclamation is for, uh, it, it kind of de designates the importance and, and what it means. And I want to say this, this one right here has eight whereases. And that's, some, that's pretty, that, that's a lot. I mean, it really is. If you say whereas eight times, a lot of times you, your last one is, it doesn't even sound like whereas. But uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go through this because Susan has read a lot of the, uh, the history. But uh, I do want to read the first and the last and then, and then the, uh, the ending on this. Whereas the Blount County Public Library is commemorating a 100 year plus history. And whereas, after one century, the Blount County Public Library seems to have settled in its place. Continued to support, continued support has garnered the library growth, service, and success over the last 100 years. Now, therefore, we, Tom Taylor, Clint Abbott, and Ed Mitchell, respective mayors of the city of Maryville, city of Alcoa, and Blount County, do hereby proclaim the recognition and appreciation of the Blount County Public Library and its dedication, dedicated staff. And we encourage all Blount County citizens to join us today in celebrating the 100 year anniversary and look forward to the next 100 years of creating connections, celebrating learning and inspiring imaginations. Thank you. Next, I'd like to ask Diane Surback and Teresa Horn to come up. Diane has been a resident of Blount County since 2015. Many of you know her from her work in community theater. Teresa, a resident of Blount County since 2001, is a founding member of the Maryville Downtown Association. She has been instrumental in efforts to revitalize our cityscape. But today, these two accomplished women are here to represent the Chihaui Club of which they are co-presidents, and they're going to tell us a little bit about the role the club has played in establishing the library. Please welcome Teresa and Diane.
Can you hear me? Not yet. Oh. <laughs> Hello? No? Yes? Hello? <laughs> we found it. It's such an honor and a privilege to be up here. Not only to represent Jill Howie Club, but to be recognized as one of the people that I'm with here who love and have a passion for reading in our library. I'm going to share some of the history of Jill Howie Club's part in this library. A lot of this has been already shared, so I'm going to skim over some of it. But in 1891, let's go back. The Industrial Revolution was kicking in. Social climate was, was gearing up and percolating. People were getting very adept to wanting to learn more and grow. The roads weren't paved yet. Outhouses were still in use. And in Maryville College, six women got together, started meeting because they wanted to expand their knowledge and to better themselves. And they called themselves the Chilhawi Literary Circle. Today, that's called the Book Club. And in 1894, the Chilhawi Club ladies met with the Tuesday Club ladies from West Maryville. I was going to say West Sevierville, but no, a West Maryville, and put their heads together and their book collections together because their passion was reading, and started generating a little library in the McGill store. Now, I guess that was a barber shop. Does anybody remember? It, anyway, it was on Broadway, and they formed a library there, of a lending library for the members. It cost 10 cents a week for the books, or 50 cents for three months to borrow the books. There were 1,200 books gathered throughout the next couple of decades. Both clubs recognized and worked together and saw an expansion constantly in need of the library that they'd built. So they put their heads together once again and formed the first library board that was comprised of the Tuesday Club, Chilhawi Club, and prominent members of this community. And on the afternoon of October 24th, 1919, the first public library of Maryville was opened at the Gamble Waller Building which is now the home of Bracken's Blues Club, downtown Broadway. I'm going to make this short. I know we're all hungry for cake, so <laughs> I'll keep, keep moving along here. 1926, the two clubs purchased the George Tool House, and it was now, it's now the Grace Community Church, but it, it housed the library for another six or seven years until it outgrew that site. And eventually the two clubs merged and they moved from Broadway to Church Street, which is now the Dandelions, but back then was A.K. Harper Building, and to McGee, and now this beautiful place in North Cusick. This absolutely beautiful environment for reading and studying and meeting people. From its inception, Chilhawi Club has been at the base giving, donating, funds, books, grounds, buildings, and we continue to do so, and we're proud to say that, and very happy to do it. We have a lot of help, obviously, but we're there for you. Now the collection that exists today are 210,000 books, volumes, and, and we're in a building that a hundred years ago, who could imagine that we'd be here today in this? Now, the words of Belle Smith have been read already in the proclamation, but she did say, while visitors have called from many parts of the country expressing surprise at the size of our library in comparison with those of other towns, we feel that our town has not begun to realize what that might mean to them. 
And those words today are ringing very true. My husband and I relocated here in 2005, and one of the bright beacons that drew us to this community was this library, this beautiful environment and skirted by a greenway outside. Absolutely beautiful. So let's all gather together, be a support to each other and to this library for the next 100 years. Thank you. And I too am so proud to be representing such a long history of this library with our Chilhowee ladies. And I'm so privileged to serve alongside so many of you in our community. One thing when we met earlier this week that people asked um, from the board and on the committee was we know and see so much of the history with the Chilhowee Club and are so appreciative of that, but what are you doing today and where are you with us moving forward? A little glimpse into the Chilhowee Club, it is, it is part of a global organization of the General Federation of Women's Clubs. This is an international group of many clubs across the world. And of that, there are six initiatives that are stated. And two of those six link directly with libraries and education. So we are challenged as local clubs to come alongside our library, our education. It also includes arts, public issues, home life issues, and conservation and preservation. And as I mention each of those, I think of how it links directly to the programming and what takes place that's spearheaded by this library. So I can assure you from an international standpoint, as well as our local ladies who now we have currently 86 active Chilhowee members. And of those ladies, ages range from 23 to 103. And yes, the 103 is at our meetings monthly. So again, my honor. Thank you. And my privilege to serve your community, our community, our library in this way. Diane mentioned, we have volunteers here, we do book drives, we have our, we've built our own little library on site at the clubhouse, and we continue to be involved with programming. We will have a table here for the literary festival that will be here just this next week. So how the seeds that were sown a hundred years ago by a few ladies have grown. And my ladies know I can't miss an opportunity to quote my favorite mantra, and that is the perfect example of a little given by many produces so much. So thank you for what you do. And I'm the only one standing between you and the cake and ice cream. So, <laughs> Susan, I will turn the mic back over to you. Thank you again for this privilege. Oh, but you two don't go too far away here. Yeah. <laughs> because you're going to lead us in singing the happy oh, birthday. Uh -huh, and um, I've been asked to, to to invite all the members of the board, the current board of trustees, and I see some of you back there, so come on up. And past members, come on up to help sing. And people who are in the program today, please. Can we get them all up here? Yeah, come on. Okay, come. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear library, happy birthday to you. Woo! Okay. So, 
This concludes our formal program, and let me invite you all. Up. Oh no, we've got to we've got to blow out the candles. I've been practicing. You better not cut me out of this. Okay. Come on. So, let me invite you all up for cake, ice cream, and drinks. Thank you. Thank you for all being here.